Hi YouTube, this is Joe Fox reporting from the Fox Cousins YouTube channel. Um, I have a special video for you guys on a uh, event from Texas, Mexican, and Borderlands history about a short-lived country from 1840 called the Republic of the Rio Grande. After the Battle of San Jacinto in 1836, Texas had won its independence from Mexico and was at that time trying to achieve statehood with the United States, but for now it had to settle for being a republic. However, there was still lingering tension between Texas and Mexico, uh, not to mention that Mexico didn't recognize Texas as its own independent country, they couldn't agree on where the border between the two was. To Mexico, its northern border was the Nueces River, while on the other hand, Texas argued that its northern border was the Rio Grande, and the area in between was Texas territory. Mexico disagreed. But what about the people who lived in this border region? What side did they see themselves on? Like most frontiers, there was an independent farming and ranching culture in northern Mexico and southern Texas that wasn't used to taking orders from the central Mexican government, even though they were Mexican citizens. Given this attitude that existed in this region, it should come as no surprise that, they, that the people living here favored a return to the Federalist Constitution of 1824. Mexican Federalists favored basing their government off of the American one, that which had states' rights and was secular. Opposed to them were the Centralists, including Santa Ana. The Centralists were loyal to the Catholic Church, wanted a strong military-led government, um, which would act as a which would preserve the aristocracy and, add, and act as a bulwark against American land grab, which just happened with the Texas Revolution. This brings us to the Republic of the Rio Grande itself, formed in 1840 by Federalists operating out of the Mexican city of Cuero. They declared their own federation independent of the centralist government of Mexico. One of the leaders of this newly declared federation was a man named Antonio Canales. He's a general who had been fighting the centralists in northern Mexico with a volunteer force of Mexican Federalists since 1838. Although the government of the Republic would function mostly out of Guero, their official capital was the town of Laredo on the Rio Grande. Their White House was the home of Laredo mayor and rancher Bartolome Garcia, and their flag, as you can see through this picture, was a three-starred flag, red, white, and black. The centralist government in Mexico responded by sending General Mariano Arista to capture the city of Laredo. The Republic of the Rio Grande's government fled across the Rio Grande to Texas in order to gather support. With the blessing but not support of Texas President Mirabel Lamar, Canales and the other officials of the Republic of the Rio Grande went to Texas cities Austin, Bastrop, Victoria, Goliad, and San Patricio. In each of these towns, uh, Canales and the other Rio Grande officials were greeted with enthusiastic crowds who offered financial support and volunteered to march down to the Rio Grande and defeat General Arista. However, the story uh, doesn't end there. I, for one, wish that that was the end of the story. That's how it ended. I like the story of Texan and, and Mexican Federalists uniting in defiance of a dictatorship in support of a constitution based off of the American one. Um, however, that's not how the story ends. Instead, the revolution quickly fell apart. The main reason for this is that the Mexican Federalists didn't like the idea of foreigners, in this case Texans, coming into their country and stealing goods or foraging from civilians. And on top of that, Canales, Antonio Canales, who recruited these Texans to come into Mexico, switches over to the other side after they promise him, uh, after they promise him clemency. The Texan volunteers that he brought into northern Mexico to fight for the Republic of the Rio Grande um, ended up having to fight their way out of the country after a small battle at Saltillo um, against an army overwhelmingly outnumbering them made up of Mexican centralists and Mexican federalists who defected over to the other side. This, this entire drama just 
turned out to be in the end one episode in an entire series of across the border excursions either committed by Texans against Mexico, Americans against Mexico, Mexico against uh, America, Mexico against Texans, Comanche against everybody. Um, these are the sort of things that happen when you see borders or different worlds um, collide. Even after the Mexican-American War, where much of South Texas, this uh, Nueces Strip between the Rio Grande and the Nueces River, is annexed into Texas, added in, um, you still see this little border, border area where these worlds are rubbing up against each other. To confuse matters even more, the idea of this country even existing in the short time it did may have been entirely an American one. There's no documentation of a Mexican newspaper or even internal conversations like letters back and forth between Canales and other officials in his government calling what they were doing the Republic of the Rio Grande. The only documentation of this comes from American sources, Americans talking about it. Even today, the story attracts its fair share of interest north of the Rio Grande. If you don't believe me, visit the restaurant in McAllen, or visit the Republic of the Rio Grande Museum today in downtown Laredo. You can also stay next door in the Five Star Hotel. The funny thing about this museum, and it's a wonderful exhibit, I would encourage everybody who's watching this video to go down to Laredo to check it out. The funny thing about it is, it was bought by the Pan Tex Hotel Corporation, the same people who created that five-star hotel next door, in 1956. The reason was to bring tourism into Laredo. Um, so that does make you wonder, um, is this entire story just a bunch of hype? Does it have any historical validity to it at all? I don't know. However, it does reflect, whether it's true or not, it does reflect um, the history of a border region, an area where two worlds, American and Mexican, are colliding and influencing each other. So I highly encourage everybody who watches this video to go down to Laredo, Texas, and we'll regret it.